Now, just a quickie this week, I want to talk about something that's fairly important but often overlooked, and that is protection. Um, now, I think we've all been there. We get a bit excited. We get our joystick out. We stick it in, um, move it back and forth a little bit, but something's just not right, and you realize that you've put it in the wrong port. Uh, so you go to take it out, and all of a sudden there's a discharge, and it's game over. Now, this has happened to me before, uh, only just recently, as a matter of fact. I um, embarrassingly went to swap the joystick over, and it didn't work out as I had hoped. Um, surprisingly, in my younger years, this never happened. It, was, it didn't even occur to me. didn't think about it. Um, but that is why we're going to look at installing some protection. In our Commodore 64, by the way. I, where else would you put it? So what we have here is a couple of joystick ESD protectors. Now these... Uh, basically get soldered to the bottom of the joystick ports on the underside of the Commodore 64 PCB. So we're going to put these in. Um, they're made by a guy, uh, I think he goes by the username Plasma on um, Lemon64, and I think he's also on Ami Bay as well, so I'll, I'll link that down below. But um, yeah, he's made up these little um, PCBs that have uh, just a couple of little ESD protectors on them. Um, and we're going to put one in our Commodore 64. I'm going to use the test bed that I usually have lying around. Um, and it's actually the one that I accidentally killed not long ago through using, well, through swapping a joystick, you know, and killing it with a little bit of ESD from my finger, which was, um, yeah, quite a surprise. I didn't expect it to happen. Um, and like I said, I'm surprised it's never happened before, but, um, Enough about that, let's let's put it in and we'll show you how it works. Okay, so here we have our Commodore 64. There's not really too many tools required for this. Obviously a Phillips head screwdriver um, and a soldering iron and also some solder. Um, but apart from that, there's not too many uh, sort of specialized tools. I mean, a desoldering iron may help and I'll explain why in a second, but uh, not 100% necessary. Um, oh, I should start from the beginning so generally you'll have three screws in the bottom of the Commodore 64 that you need to unscrew and then it's just a case of lifting the lid and disconnecting the keyboard connector and the power LED and depending on if you've got the C64C um, with the newer revision board the I think it's the 250469 um, these connectors will be in different places on the board, but generally it's all the same. Um, don't worry about all this stuff. That's a uh, kernel switcher and it's not related to this video. Um, so yeah, we'll get that out of the way. And usually you'll have a RF shield uh, over the top of this. So it may be um, a metal one with a few screws holding it down. Otherwise it's just sort of like a cardboard one that's usually just clipped over the joystick port but either way get that out of the way and then you'll be able to see the main board and then it's just a case of removing a few screws in order to get the main board out um, so yeah these things are um, as I said sold by a guy on the a couple of the Commodore forums and it took about two weeks to get here. He's, uh, he's based in Europe somewhere. I, I can't remember the exact country. Uh, but it took about two weeks to get to Australia. And he sells them for, I think, five euros for the, for the pair um, with the chips already soldered. Or four euros if you want to solder it yourself. I just opted to go with having him solder them. I mean, one euro it doesn't make that much big of a difference. Um, and yet it was just easier for me so that's what I did two weeks later they arrived and yeah I did order a few of these because I plan on sticking them on every board that I restore um, but anyway once you've got those screws out you could, should be able to just lift the board out and I've just realized that I've left a screw there get that out of the way and for any keen-eyed viewers, I wasn't actually 
wearing my wrist strap, which is a um, yeah, which is kind of silly when we're talking about ESD, and I'm not using the proper precautions anyway. So once you've got the board out, there will probably be another metal shield on the underside of the board. Um, now. You can desolder these, they're usually held in by a bunch of solder tabs around the outside of the board. Um, but they do take a lot of heat to actually um, get that solder flowing. So the other option is you can just snip off the little tabs that are around the outside. And um, you can pretty much just throw that thing away. All it really does is trap heat. Um, unless you've got like an AM radio close by your Commodore 64, I mean you're not going to um, have any interference anyway so yeah I usually just throw those things away they're not worth keeping really unless you're really pedantic about that kind of thing but let's have a look at the underside of the board and you can see yeah, this one um, because I've got all the, the ZIF sockets mounted on top a lot of the uh, ceramic capacitors I've swapped to the bottom side of the board anyway getting off track again so these are designed to sit exactly around the pins of the joystick ports on the underside of the board. Um, and they'll pretty much only go one way, so you can't really mount it that way. Um, and yeah, you just sort of put them in place and then flow some of the solder from the original pins and you probably should do this two-handedly and yeah they'll pretty much just flow straight onto the um, the new tiny little PCB so it is a very simple job and yeah I mean fairly inexpensive five euros is a lot better than um, the price of a SID chip or even a CIA chip. Now, something that I probably shouldn't explain, should have explained, the reason we want to do this is to protect uh, the CIA chips and also the SID chip. Um, anything that's plugged into the joystick port pretty much has a direct connection to the SID chip and also the CIA chips. So um, yeah, neither of them are things that you want to exactly fry um, with a tiny bit of static electricity. And it, like I said, it is possible because I've done it only recently. And then all that's left to do is just a quick clean up with some isopropyl alcohol. Give it a quick little scrub. And just check our work, make sure there's no bridged connections. Yep, that looks good. So there we go, that's it. We're protected. Yeah, and this will not only protect your SID chip, but also your CIA chips. Actually, I think it's only the the first CIA chip when you one that's that's directly connected to the ports. But even still, it's better than frying one. And if you look closely, these are not matched because yeah, I did have to replace this one only recently. So yeah, that is it. I'll, like I said, I'll put the links to these things. It's hard to do this. When the camera is mounted that way down below and um yeah i definitely recommend picking some up um I, i'm not associated with plasma I, I don't know him i just you know looked it up on the internet figured it was worth a go and a couple of weeks later like i said they they arrived in the post and that's all there is to it so um yeah as always thanks for watching if you haven't already subscribed you can do that and um Yes, stay tuned for more of these videos. You can leave me a comment, like, dislike. Let me know what you thought either way. Um, I'm always happy with feedback. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.